All right, guys, there it is. There's the mantle build. It's a mock-up fireplace with a mock-up mantle and a mock-up TV. For all you guys that have asked me how I did this, this is the, the definitive explanation of how and why I did the things I did. There's a couple things you need to understand. This is all just scrap wood, so there's nothing fancy here. You can choose whatever kind of wood you want. All right. My original, I use poplar. I like the grain. It's easy to stain for what I wanted to do. You could paint this, stain this, whatever you want. You could do a burn finish. I forget what they call that, but it, it looks good if it's done right. So let's go over the basics. This top plate is just a shelf for the top of the fireplace. You can see this piece is missing. I used all scrap wood. And it just slides in here and you could put a couple of dollops of liquid nails underneath it when you set it in place. And just a couple of weight on it to set and once the, the liquid nails or the construction adhesive sets, it's not going anywhere. Okay. The upper part of the mantle, you've already looked at some of the pictures, but let's go over the details. Here's the underside. And if you looked at how I built it, it's made up of two layers of wood um, along with trim. And these slots right here will set down over the, the pipe. That locks its position and gives it strength. Now, there's a couple things you need to remember to do. If you're going to do something like this, you don't want to leave the interior white or whatever color it is. You want to paint it flat black or a very dark gray. Something that masks what's in here. Now I used an ebony stain on the wood. And then I used flat black for the back wall and anything that could be visible. The idea there is that everything's in shadow so when you put your electronics equipment in there, the electronics are going to kind of fade away into the dark. One of the features of this is the electrical box that's mounted underneath. Now I'm using a metal one. I don't, if you're going to do this, don't use a plastic one. You want a metal one. Okay? It's just mounted up underneath in a recessed pocket. And it goes down and it plugs into a new outlet that I put for the fireplace. So the fireplace would plug in here along with the, the, uh, the power strip. And when I put this outlet in, there was another outlet down lower over to the left and I just snuck a wire down through the wall and tied into the existing outlet. Okay. The benefit of this is that your plugs are up there and it helps keep the wires out of the way. All right. One thing I didn't include in here is I also ran a coaxial cable that came up through the structure of the fireplace and just kind of hung over here where I could hook it up to the cable box or the satellite box. And over here where the TV is, I ran a wire down for power and for the video feeds for the DVD player, the satellite, HDMI signal and power goes through a small hole and that would come down underneath here and tie into the appropriate place. Now the lower mantle just slides in on the inner shelf and how I did it is I put a couple dollops of liquid nails in there and just slid it in and I use this couple of small screws, just one screw right here will keep this nice and stable. And you can see the shape of the thing, it just kind of frames around. And this of course just goes in like this, slides down, pops in place. And that's, uh, that's how I did it. The corbels on this, I did a wider corbel on mine and they're attached underneath the upper mantle. But you need those to kind of close this in and make it look like a, a mantle. From a distance, so you can see right now, even without any paint, it's just white. It's shadow in there. You can't see anything. You add a little black paint or black stain, dark stain, it's going to disappear. I'm going to do that right now. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's the end of my black paint. But now you can see how nicely everything kind of disappears in the shadows under there. Okay, here's the, uh, the mock-up of the uh, fireplace build. Up here is the TV area. Down here, of course, is the fireplace. Ignore this electrical outlet. Um, 
It just happens to be in the wall where I'm building this in my barn. Down here, I don't know if you can see it real well, but I'll show you in another video. This is an outlet I placed in the other fireplace when I built it. It's recessed and they provide power for the fireplace and the power strip underneath here would plug in like that. So it's all hidden. Those details I kind of left out. But this is it. You got the pipes, the mounted strong. Um, the next step, of course, is you have to build the mantle. Now, originally the top plate up here is where there's a shelf that you've seen me put in underneath the TV. That's a simple fabrication. You guys can figure out what you want to do there. In my case, the first thing I did is I, I cut a piece of wood, a little oversized for the mantle, and then I lined it up and I got a center mark right here. Okay. These pipes are where we mount the mantle to. In this case, I have one about six inches from this end and six inches from this end. Where you put them is up to you, but that's where they fit best for me. This is a very narrow fireplace. If you're going to do a wider mantle, then I would recommend a third pipe in the middle to support it. Okay? I'm using three quarter inch pipe here. You can use one inch. I would not go down anything below three quarter. You need the strength. You're going to put things on the mantle and who knows what can happen. You don't want it to ever break loose. Once you determine those dimensions you want to use for your fireplace, I cut the top plate for the mantle. This is the actual top of the mantle. The next step is I'm going to cut this other piece. Now this is a little oversized. It's a little longer than I planned and a little wider. I'm going to cut pieces underneath here that will go between these boards. I'm going to do that right now. Now you can see that fits in there really snug. Not super snug, but there's not a lot of slop, maybe a sixteenth of an inch clearance. Now this one, this one will go underneath here and I'm going to glue them together. Now you see they're not exactly the same size because this top piece is oversized. Okay, now this is the under piece that makes the, the, the thing thicker. Notice I clearance these so that they will clear the clamps underneath here. All right. Now you want to size this so it comes out to the end of your pipes and just goes underneath a half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. That's all you need. So this goes on, centers up. This goes underneath here. see what we have here this edge here goes underneath that cross brace and this edge here comes out to where the pipe ends so when you finally finish up the top mantle it just kind of slides in there like that locks in between these two pipes and it can't move laterally okay and what you do once you set it in place you just put a couple of screws underneath there and it will lock it down to here okay that simple Okay, now we have to do two more pieces under here. There it is. That's how it. Uh, that's how it assembles. Okay, that gives you your guides to lock everything together. So when you're ready to put it in place, put it in like that. Push it down. Give it a thunk, and it's locked in. A couple of screws underneath, and it's not going anywhere. Okay, so this is the upper part of the mantle. We have the cutouts for the mounts for the pipe. This is the lower piece and the spacers for where the pipe fits in. 
This lip right here goes underneath the upper frame. Okay. So depending on the thickness of your wood, this is two three quarter inch pieces of plywood. Um, I use some furring strip for the edge and you can see how the edge is offset. You can see how the edge is. You can trim this any way you want. You can put uh, just diagonal cuts, curve it, doesn't matter, whatever you want to do. But this is how the upper mantle assembly works. Okay, there's two screw holes under here. One here, one here. And they'll hold the thing to the, put that in like that. There it is. Not going anywhere. One more time, I'd like to remind you, if you're doing a wide mantle, you can use a third pipe right here and just use the same technique for getting everything where you want it. It'll give it nice extra strength and uh, never give you any trouble. If you looked at my video and you look at the corbels, they're, they're just something I designed that, to match the style of the, of the mantle. Depending on what you want to do, you can either make your own, and I suspect that if you're going to go to the trouble to make this mantle, you're going to want to make some matching corbels. And whether you're going to go with a, an antique style or modern, contemporary, or who knows, art deco, you can design the corbels the way you want. You can also buy pre-made corbels at most home centers, and you can probably get them on Amazon. So whatever you decide to do on the corbel, that's up to you. But it just butts in the side here and makes this into a nice little pocket. Now, two things you want to do that I hadn't mentioned yet. You don't need to make this space right here any bigger than necessary. You don't want it tight. You want to be able to get in there with your arm so that you can hook up the wires and move equipment around. But it only needs to be about four inches tall from this surface to the underside from the surface of here to the underside of here you only need about four inches and it looks like I have about five on this one you just need enough room to get your arm in here to hook up the wires slide your equipment back in and enough room so you get some airflow so the equipment doesn't overheat all right I think I've covered every everything I can think of so I'm going to put this video together and uh, put some pictures online and uh, you guys will be seeing this in a day or so. Thanks for watching. If you like my projects, my work, please subscribe. Hit that like button. Leave a comment. Ask me questions. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. 
good luck with your project for those of you guys that are going to build this. And, uh, and I think uh, I don't have anything else to offer. That's pretty much it. I hope uh, this was informative enough. Catch you on YouTube. Are you videotaping still? We're good? No, don't put your fingers in front of it, honey. Alright, hit stop. Alright, hit stop.